focus today is going to be on what happens when we click on the different items in the list of the Twitter search. And if you're not sure exactly how the uh, adapter works, bear with me for now. We'll go over another example of the adapter next time. The idea of the adapter is this. The adapter handles the creation of the, of the list that appears in a recycler view. So I think if we only think of, uh, if we think of certain functions that are performed, even if we don't understand exactly how the adapter works, we can kind of go ahead and see about what happens when we click on the items, if that makes sense. So I'm going to open up Android Studio. go back, briefly revisit <coughs> the adapter so that we can understand how the clicking works and how the list communicates with the rest of the app. Essentially, when we create this adapter, this is the wrong example. My mistake. When we create the adapter, we give it an array called tags, which is an array list of strings, and we give it an item click listener and an item long click listener. So in a nutshell, we give the adapter, how long are you guys going to let me talk without letting me know that the screen wasn't on? <laughs> it's an array list instead of an array is because um, we want it to be dynamic. We want the ability to add, delete, and so on items from it. So when we call our recycler view, we create the new adapter, we give it three things. We give it the array list called tags that contains the strings of all the tags of our Twitter search. We give it an item click listener and we give it an item long click listener. That is, that are the classes, or I'm sorry, those are the objects that control what happens when we click on an item, what happens when we long click on an item. They are defined as part of this class. Do we have to have a long click? Not, you don't have to have any listener unless you want to code some functionality based on that gesture. So if we had a list that you just scrolled through and you couldn't click on it and do anything, then you don't need either of those two listeners. Keep in mind that we make the adapter. 
and we specify what events and what event handlers we want to use. So we could have an event handler for a click, an event handler for a swipe, an event handler for any sort of gesture that you can have on an Android device. Because we make that, right? When we made this searches adapter, we define what it's going to have. We said that when we make the searches adapter, it is going to have a, a, a array list called tags. That it's going to have an on-click listener, and then it's going to have a long-click listener. From the main activity is where we set those things. And remember with object references, the way object references work is if you use an object reference as a argument in a function, you're actually pointing to that argument. So, or you're pointing to that object. So the tags that I have defined here, the array list called tags that I've defined here, I pass that as an argument to the searches adapter which means that the searches adapter also has a pointer to that very same array list called tags. Okay, So it's not like there's two arrays, one in this object, one in that object. I pass the array object as an argument, which means I'm passing a pointer to that object. So both of these point to the same thing. Just like both of these point to the same item click listener and item long click listener. Make sense? Now, where is the item click listener and item long cl clicked listener defined? It's defined here. All right. Here we define the on click listener that does some things. Here we define, oh, that's the save buttons, I'm sorry. Here is where we define the click listener for the list item. Here is where we define the long click listener for the list item. So when we create that adapter, we give the adapter the list and the two listeners. So when the adapter does its magic and does its thing, it is going to loop through that list however many times it needs to, corresponding to the size. And for each item in that array list, it creates a text view that contains the value of the text and has the two listeners associated with it. So at this point today, we're sort of stepping back from the, the, the adapter a little bit, you don't really need to know how the adapter works its magic. Just you need to know that the adapter creates list items, it gets its text from that array called lists, or tags rather, and it gets the two listeners from the main activity. Now what happens when we click on those or long click on them? Let's start with when we click on them. When we click on it, we fire off the, the on click listener. And what does that do? That goes to Twitter and does a search for whatever our query was. In this case, our query was Cleva Browns, so it did a query for Cleva Browns. And gives us a list of all these tweets that are related to the Cleveland Browns.
let's follow this through. Well, we know what the listener is, right? Because every item in that list, its text comes from that tag, remember, comes from that tag array, and the on-click listener comes from the click listener, which was passed in as an argument. And that click listener is the click listener that we defined in the main activity called item click listener. Now it's going to go do its thing. So let's go and look at the item click listener. Again, not the save button listener, but the item click listener. What was that? It's weird. All right. <laughs> this is a new concept, what we're doing today. Notice that when we click on this, it opens up what application? What application does it open up? Actually, it opens up the Twitter website in Google Chrome. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create an intent. What is an intent? An intent is this activity intends to call another activity. It may be part of the same application, or it may be a different uh, application. In this case, the intent we give a URL for. All right? What's our URL? Our URL is http colon slash slash mobile twitter dot com slash search q equals is the URL. Well, I, I will get it from the strings. It's the URL plus the value of the string associated with the tag. So, let's trace this through. We click on one of the items. Click on this item. That item is in a view. It's in a, a text view. That view gets passed to the sign click listener. So we know what we want to search for, right? We know the tag of what we want to search for because we have that view. We pull from that view the value of the text, all right? So if we click on this one, the value of the text is CB. But we don't want to search for CB, right? We want to search for the query that belongs to CB. How do we find the query that belongs to CB? We get it from our saved searches, shared preferences. We get the string that's associated with that tag. All right? So what that's doing is that's giving us the query that's associated with the tag or the value that's associated with the key. And we tack that on to the URL. So what we're searching for, let me open up a browser window here.
We're searching for mobile Twitter. Search Q equals Cleveland Browns. Okay. Where does that URL come from? Part of it is hard coded. That's the mobile twitter.com slash search question mark equals or question mark whatever I don't remember if there's equal or not. And the last part comes from the query that is stored in our shared preferences. The query that belongs to the tag. All right. How do we know the tag? Because the tag we could pull from the text view of the view that just got clicked. Because this on click lister gets called when one of those items gets clicked. The particular item that gets clicked gets passed in as the view. So we know what view got clicked. We know because we've rigged the deck that it's a text view. So we grab the value of that text view, we get the text from it, convert it to string, and that is our tag. So in this case, that would be CB. We piece together the URL that includes partly a, um, partly the hard-coded URL and partly the value of the query. And then we create an intent. An intent says we want to view this page. And what page we want to view? We want to view the, the page that has this URL. Okay? That URI in code gets rid of bad characters like spaces and stuff like that. So this intent says, hey, I want to view. My action is to have an event to view. And what do I want to view? I want to view this URL. Now, how does it know to open Chrome? All right. It knows to open Chrome because it knows that Chrome can handle URLs. We're giving this activity, we're giving this intent a URL, therefore it knows that Chrome is something that can open it. Now, how many of you have uh, used actually an Android device? Have you ever tried to click on something and ask you how you want to open it? Do you want to open it in this or that? That is when you have two applications that can handle the same intent. So for example, if we were to have downloaded Twitter onto our device, all right? It wouldn't know if I wanted to open it in Twitter or open it in Chrome, and it would ask me which I want to open it in. All right. If you, uh, where I've seen this a lot is if I'm on my mobile device and I want to open up a YouTube video, let's say from Facebook, they'll ask me, do I want to open up in Chrome or do I want to open up in the YouTube app? And then I can choose whichever one I want, and I'm good to go. All right. So that's how you get the multiple choices of which app. The app has to be able to handle that kind of intent, and if it can, it will be on a list that you can select. All right. In this case, the only thing that can handle this kind of intent on this device is Chrome, so it opens up in Chrome. Once that other activity runs, or once that intent is, is uh, the activity is started for that intent, whoops, that application sort of goes in the background, our application. Nothing happens. All right? Now, when I go back, I'm back to that application. The reason it behaves like that is we're not returning anything back from the Twitter search back to this application. We can actually do that if we want to. If we had an application, let's say, that took a photo 
and we opened an edit, uh, an edit image application. Maybe when we're done, we want to return back the edited image so that we could view it. But in this case, nothing is returned from this intent. This intent runs, comes to the forefront. You can do what you want to within that application. You hit the back arrow, and you're just back at the original application. Okay? So, what would we have to change for this if we wanted to make it not a Twitter search, but a Google search? Yeah. The beginning part of the URL. All right. To do a Google search, I think it is www.google.com. Let's do a Google search. Let's test it out. even use the queue. So, rest of it remains the same, right? We're going to get the value from the shared preferences that corresponds to what we clicked on. The only difference is going to be the action that uh, the URL that we specified. So there's a Google search. Now, people that write other applications, you know, will specify an API of what you have to call. Now it should be back to calling Twitter. <laughs> Questions about this? The key thing about this is an intent. If you want to go to another application or you want to create a new activity within your same application, you do it via creating an intent. questions about this. All right, let's look at the long press. The long press is a little more involved because if I press the long press, I get a little dialogue there that asks me, do I want to share, do I want to edit, or do I want to delete? I'm going to cancel. So, that gets that lister gets assigned the exact same way the other one got assigned, right? It's part of the constructor of that search adapter. Because we pass the tags, we pass the click lister, and we pass the, lo the long click lister. And every row that we create, we set the long click listener to be that long click listener. The long click listener is defined over here. All right. First thing we do is we grab the tag that's been selected. We grab it the same way. Does it make sense how we grab the tag that's been selected? So the word tag, the variable tag, is going to have what we long pressed on. So if I long press on that, the variable tag has the value CB in it. Does that make sense? Okay. And the answer is, because we give this, this function gets a view, we grab from that view that this gets, 
the value of the tag. We build up an alert dialog builder. All right. And a, a dialog is where you give the user like a list of options. It would be almost like a right mouse in a way. Um, or like an alert box that pops up. This is what's called a modal. Because notice that once you click on it, you have to do something. You have to dispatch this window before you can do anything else in the rest of the app. So I have to pick one of these options or cancel it. Or I can't go back to the question. All right. I set the title. The title contains the tag, which we can't see because it's too small. We set the items as coming from the array, dialogue items. We display We set the items to that dialog, and we start an on-click listener for it that says what we do when we click on the dialog window. The dialog window is this whole thing. So we got to determine what we've clicked on. All right. How do we know what we clicked on? Well, we get a number of corresponds to the different items. So case of zero, case of one, case of two. Zero stands for share, one stands for edit, two stands for delete. We then set the cancel button and we show the dialog. So, we create our dialog that has these options and this on-click listener that says if you click a zero, do this, if you click a one, do this, if you click a two, do this. And then finally, this is a cancel button, go ahead and show the dialog. So that's how we show the dialog. Okay. Now let's look at the options for showing. First option is if we pick one, we go to share that tag. <coughs> All that does is it creates a share activity, a share intent, or a send action, a new intent, that can include some extra information, the subject and the text, and the kind of data, and then it goes and does that. So, if I long click on this, click on share, it shows me a list of the things that we can share to, based on what apps we have installed. All right. You can share via messages, you can share via Gmail, you can share it to Android Drive, or you can just copy it to the clipboard. Those are the standard options that you get when you go to share something on an Android device, given the applications that we have installed here. If we had another message, if we had Facebook Messenger or some other kind of messaging service, those would pop up there too. But again, this application isn't interested in that. It just knows it's going to create an intent for sharing and let whoever handles that intent worry about how that's going to get shared. All right. It's so a nice thing about this is that Android sort of gives something up in a web browser. You just create that intent, away it goes and it will get opened by 
either the web browser or the Twitter app, depending on what's installed. You don't have to worry about what applications this guy has to share. You create a share intent or a send intent. You pass some extra information. You call it, and that intent clicks in. So from this application's viewpoint, really doesn't have to do a lot. It just has to create an intent that's going to handle the sharing. Edit. Essentially what that does when we go to edit is it takes the tag, which it knows, it grabs the, the, the value for that tag, the query for that key, and pops it back in here and you can edit again. All right? Remember we discussed the quirk last time of if I were to change the tag, it doesn't delete the old one, it creates a new one with the new tag. And then from there, make the edits that you want. If you click on the save listener, it goes and does its thing again. And saves the tag in the query in the tag search. Now, notify Notify, uh, notice what gets done here. If the tag wasn't there before, so that could be a brand new one, or it could be an edit one, it adds a tag to the list, and then it notifies the adapter that the data set has changed. All right? What that causes happen is for the adapter to go and recreate the values that are in this list. If I've changed something, right, and if I go in and edit and I change Cleveland Browns and I keep the tag the same, I don't really need to change that because that list only has a tag. But if I add a brand new tag, all right, or if I change the value of the tag from CB to C BR or something like that, then I have to tell the adapter, hey, something in the data has changed so it can go and recreate that list. Last but not least, if I selected to delete the search, it goes in ask me if I'm sure creates a dialogue, just like before, deletes it from the tag array, deletes it from shared preferences, and then again notifies the adapter that something has changed. So it can go and redo that. If we didn't have that in here, we would go and delete it, but it would still show in that list until the next time we brought it up. Next time we brought it up, when it recreated the list through the adapter, it would bring it up. Are there any questions about any of this? Let's go over some of the things that were new in this case. It's always good to sort of take inventory. The one thing that is new is the multiple XML files. All right? We have an XML file for each list item that's going to appear in the list. That gets inflated. It gets inflated once for every item on the list. Think of inflating it as like bringing it to life. Inflating is a good word. Think of like something that's dehydrated and you add water to it. It becomes alive again, so to speak. Because we don't know 
in here, how many things are going to be in that recycle view? We just know it's going to be a list of things. So we're going to create an item that's going to contain a text view for every item in the list. So that's one thing that's different. In the past, we sort of had hard-coded. We had five text views, you know, a text view for that, a text view for that. In this case, we create dynamically through our code the number of text views that we need to make up that list, which makes sense for a list, right? Because you don't know exactly how many items are going to be in that list. All right. Second thing is the adapter, and we'll talk more about that next time. All right. The idea of the adapter is to handle the list. What do I mean by handle? It means how the list is created, how each item in the list is created, what it's going to look like, what data it's going to contain, and finally, what happens when we interact with it? What happens when we click on the item? Or what happens if we long press on the item? We have a couple new listers. We've always had a, a, a click listener, I suppose. But we've had the long press listener to handle that. And then finally, the last thing I think that's different is we have these intents for activities. And that's how one activity within an app can either trigger another activity within the same app or trigger another activity outside the app. All right, are there any questions on this? Next time I want to back up and spend more time looking at the adapter. So you can really get an idea of what goes on in that. Because at a glance, it appears kind of mysterious. So hopefully we'll be able to cut some of the mystery from the adapter next time. All right, that's all I had. I'll go make sure the room's unlocked. I'll come back here and get my files. And then I'll be back over there. If you have anything for me to grade, bring it to my attention. Uh, and we'll go from there.